Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of carotid artery occlusion or more precisely internal carotid artery occlusion. A 75 years old male patient came to us with a history of recurrent transient ischemic attacks. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here let's start with the right carotid system. The intermedial thickness or IMT of the right common carotid and internal carotid arteries looks to be within normal limit. Here's the right common carotid artery which shows multiphasic wave pattern here. The flow velocity is within normal limit. This is the right internal carotid artery. The velocity is increased. You can see an echogenic plaque at the proximal part. Here's the right external carotid artery showing the multiphasic wave pattern. Here's the right vertebral artery giving the normal anti-grid flow with the normal flow velocity. Here's the proximal internal carotid artery with carotid bulb and you can see an irregular predominantly echogenic and calcified plaque causing luminal narrowing at this point. Here's the longitudinal and transverse section of the carotid bulb along with the proximal internal carotid artery showing the echogenic calcified plaque. This calcified plaque is causing around 63% surface area reduction indicating moderate luminal stenosis. Here's the proximal right internal carotid artery which is showing the upper limit of mild stenosis. Now let's jump into the left side. The left common carotid and internal carotid arteries show increased intimomedial thickness. Here is the left common carotid artery. The spectrum doesn't look normal. You can see an atypical high resistive pattern with a small reversed flow phase in let systole and absent diastolic flow. This type of wave pattern suggests an ipsilateral internal carotid artery occlusion. The common carotid artery wave pattern actually resembles the wave pattern of the external carotid artery. This rapid upstroke indicates normal inflow. That means there is no proximal significant stenosis. Here is the left external carotid artery and you can see the wave pattern looks quite similar to the common carotid artery. We have checked the internal carotid artery and you can see this is the carotid bulb which is showing a narrow luminal flow with aliasing and just after the proximal part you can see there is no detectable flow within the internal carotid artery. The lumen is filled with predominantly sonolucent plaque that is the type 1 plaque. Here is the sample taken from the proximal part of the internal carotid artery. You can see a very low monophasic wave pattern with absence of diastole, indicating nearby occlusion. Here is the left common carotid artery showing mild surface area reduction. Here is the left carotid bulb with a substantially sonolucent plaque causing more than 60% surface area reduction, indicating moderate luminal stenosis. Here is the proximal left internal carotid artery which is showing very tiny lumen with around 95% luminal stenosis and just after that part you can't see any flow within the lumen due to the sonolucent plug occluding the lumen completely. Now let's see on real time. Here is the common carotid artery on the left side you can see a good amount of flow. Here is the plug you can see the plug is causing narrowing of the bulb. This one is the external carotid artery showing good flow inside and when we are jumping into the internal carotid artery you can see there is a narrow luminal flow at the proximal part but just after that you can't see any flow within the lumen. The lumen is completely filled with sonolucent that is type 1 plug. Here we have taken the sample and you can see there is a very small amount of monophasic flow with the absence of diastolic component. We try to go a little more further and you can see the flow became more reduced or almost absent. Now let's come a little more proximal. We have taken sample from the narrow turbulent flow of the carotid bulb and you can see alternating forward and reverse flow direction during each cardiac cycle. 
the velocity is very high and this flow pattern indicates that the flow is trying to go forward but due to occlusion it is going reversed which confirms the distal stenosis mode. Here you can see the spectrum with a bidirectional flow with a peak systolic velocity more than 200 cm per second. Now let's end with the left vertebral artery which is giving an anterograde flow with a normal velocity. So in summary, severe luminal narrowing or stenosis of the left internal carotid artery with distal subtotal to total occlusion is noted due to sonolucent or type 1 plaque. This left internal carotid artery shows monophasic flow at the proximal part and almost no flow signal distally. There is moderate luminal narrowing or stenosis of both carotid bulbs is seen due to uniformly ecogenic and calcified that is type 4 or you may say type 5 plugs depending on where you're from on the right side and substantially sonolucent that is type 2 plugs on the left side. There is also mild luminal narrowing or stenosis of the right internal carotid artery due to predominantly ecogenic and calcified that is type 4 or 5 plugs and left common carotid artery due to predominantly ecogenic that is type 3 plugs. Now the take home message. In case of recurrent stroke, searching for soft plaques that is type 1 or type 2 plaques in the carotid system is necessary to identify the cause of recurrence. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.